What's cracking, y'all? You are now watching Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, y'all? Back with episode two of NB90s. This time covering the next two years of the 90s era, 1992 and 1993, where we'll get a beautiful recap of what the NBA was like at that time, what was going on, the storylines, all the cool stuff. So this is now an official playlist on my channel. So go check out the NB 90s era playlist. I don't know if that's exactly what it's called, but you'll see it. NB 90 series, I think is what it's called. And you can find episode one there as well. And there are gonna be five total episodes of this. So be on the lookout. Cause if you like this, you're gonna like more of what's to come. Let's check it out. Oh snap. NBA TV presents MB 90s. It's the NBA. Like he bought airspace. It went with the flow of joy. Back in the day. Don't ever underestimate the heart of a champion. In the decade when the shorts got longer, the players soared higher. Yeah, and throws it down. And the game went global. We've got all the players. The things he was doing, like, man, we've never seen this before. And the looks. A Detroit player. <laughs> the 90s were bad for clothes. We know this. And rivalries that were off the hook. 37 points in, like, 15 seconds. So chill on out. We're keeping it really real. My general idea was to dunk on everybody. Right here on MB 90s coaching carousel was spinning prior to the start of the 92 season and when it finally stopped a real big star landed in new york city welcome to the big apple pat obviously when the knicks signed pat riley as the coach i was extremely fired up i think pat was looking for more challenges and new york is new york in terms of basketball it's the mecca i'm excited about being with the knicks and having the opportunity to build something significant like finesse, the hair, the suit. Like, all right, this is going to be fun. You got Pat Riley coming into the fold. They became legitimate. He changed his style of coaching when he came to New York. Pat Riley has great pride of defense. That is what he is going to stress to his team. You really saw that, the no layup rule. Brought the bully ball to, to New York. It was that bumping rhyme. That toughness of Anthony Mason, Oakley, and John Starks. We were physical. We wanted to keep hands on you. We wanted to keep bodies on you. You can see the team start to say, we're good. I mean, we're just going to stay out here. And if you weren't hitting your jumper that day, you weren't going to beat the Knicks. Pat Riley was all about winning. Came to New York, marquee team, turned the team around immediately. That was like a great move for the league because it created more excitement in the East. But basketball took a back seat when the start of the 92 season brought a shocking announcement in Los Angeles. Because of uh, the HIV virus that I have attained, uh, I will have to retire from the Lakers. It was the most devastating thing that I've ever heard. <sighs> I cried like a little kid. He just took it right in stride. It was like he was not gonna let him throw him off in his life journey. The fans demanded an encore and voted Magic into the 92 All-Star Game. And the all-time great put on a performance for the ages. He's going for the MVP. Magic makes his cameo in the All-Star Game and lit it up. Three-pointer. He became like a poster child for HIV that you could get through it. You could be positive. There was a chance. There was something else. Maybe you'll see me back. Maybe you won't. But I'll remember the, all these good times this afternoon. I'd like to thank you for sharing this with me. Thank you. There's no other way you can say it. He's magic. He is magic. And B90s will magically reappear after this short break. 
the New Jersey Nets have looked with envy across the river at what the Garden has and what the Knicks have. Chuck Daly always had an eye for fashion and liked what he saw coming together in the Meadowlands. Fast break, New Jersey. Behind the back to Coleman. It was a camaraderie of guys that really just enjoy playing with each other, and that made it a lot of fun. That team had a chance to be a real dangerous club in the playoffs. There were a lot of pieces with that club. DC was definitely a beast. At 16, drill would shoot, pass, block shots. He just can do so much. Jason Petrovic, sharp shooter indeed. Whenever I would get double in the polls, he's like, just kick it to me for three, DC. Petrovic for three. I just remember chasing him off screens. He's nailing these 28 footers. Jason Petrovic, you gotta love this guy. Mr. Chibs, Kenny Anderson, left Rack City in the building. Kenny Anderson used to kill us when he was on the net. What a sweet move by Kenny Anderson! For whatever reason, New York breeds great point guards who never play for the Knicks. We had a great team, <laughs> but the East was so tough. The talent pool in the East was out of control, and a crafty Cavaliers point guard kept Cleveland rocking. Mark Price, he just put him in a, a backyard on the barn, and they put a basket up there, and that's the kind of guy he was. One of the most underrated players uh, ever. You know what? He really didn't get all this due. Under radar and publicity, but over radar when you had to leave him open at the top. Three seconds left. Price for three. Yes! yes. Turn your back, you might get shot with a nice swish to the net. He could have been just like John Stockton, but I think that Cleveland team couldn't click. They couldn't get over the hump. Nah, they couldn't run with the Bulls, but the Cavs did send Larry Bird and the Celtics packing. Price again. He should be more famous than, than he actually is. He should be better remembered because he was, he was a phenomenal player. If you don't love Mark. Mark Price was. Like, this guy was nasty. Boy, his jump shot was sweet. Had a handle on the ball, could pass, bro. I mean, you could, you could, you could almost say he was Steve Nash before Steve Nash in some areas, in some areas. Price says, remember your team and something's wrong with you. When the Bulls went looking for a head coach, they didn't have to go far to find someone who brought a style all his own. Look at that stash. <laughs> the hair was looking good, I, I, but you gotta check the mustache. Nice bushy mustache, and got a little, a little mini fro. <laughs> Looks like his days as a member of the New York Knicks under Red Holzman and crew. He was a genius with the mustache. He's keep playing hard. Phil can pull things off that other people can't. Remember, he's 6'10", has those wide shoulders. He got the nickname Coat Hanger because of his wide, straight shoulders, which made him kind of look like a coat hanger was stuck in his shirt. A look for Phil that might be okay or acceptable might not work on somebody that's 5'7". PJ is so relaxed and so laid back. No one could take him out of his temperature. He coached at 40 degrees. You never saw him lose his cool. I called him the weatherman. He always did. I remember I only saw Phil Jackson lose his cool once. And I saw the most animated I'd ever seen the guy was with the Los Angeles Lakers. He was coaching. And it was the 2010-2011 season in the playoffs. Second round versus the Dallas Mavericks. That would be the year the Mavericks won the championship. They stopped uh, Kobe and Pau Gasol from three-peating and going to four straight finals. And that was a frustrating series. The Lakers got swept, but, you know, Pau Gasol got absolutely exposed that series. And I remember Phil Jackson getting up off the seat, animated with Pau Gasol, putting hands on him, trying to get him motivated and into the game, pounding Pau Gasol's chest, yelling in his face. I kid you not, I'm going to have to do a video on that. I ain't never seen Phil so animated. Cool. I'm slamming. We're all jamming. And check out this video. Rexer, he's open. He's taking off from the free throw line, putting his heels up, dunking on you, and his finger roll 
was almost as nice as George Gurman. George Gurman is 100, Clyde is like a 99. Drexler takes it in. Oh, my goodness. Didn't touch anything but molecules. Freak of nature athletes, because not too many guys that just love to run. Clyde. Clyde. Yes, sir. Clyde. The Glide. Very humble guy. Fucking fly. Playing against him. Okay. He said he's this evil Clyde Strong. He's too big and too strong to be playing. The only basketball player I know to wear a V is and fly through the air like that. Clyde had his hands full when he ran up against Michael in the 92 finals. They did meet in the finals and he didn't have a chance. Jordan was just on fire that whole series. There's Jordan for three, yes! Michael indicating he can't believe it. It's my game. I love it, I love it. Oh, gosh, I can't remember. I can't believe I made that shot. You? That doesn't come out of your mouth. What comes out of your mouth, if somebody don't come over here, I'm going to shoot these all night. And NBA championship series record, 35 points. In the half. It was a running team, and Chicago was a team that could do everything, and uh, I felt sorry for them. The Bulls have repeated. Let the party begin. Speaking of back to back, MB 90s will be right back. You are watching MB 90s Volume 2. Shaquille O'Neal was a larger-than-life character, so it was only natural he would end up in the Magic Kingdom. Shaq, please have an autograph, please. Shaq was like, um, you know, Shaq was what the NBA needed. Shaq was absolutely what the 90s were about. Somebody young, someone big, a statue of life, rapping. Shaq Fu. Shaq Fu to return. My next Smash CD. You know, Shaq understood the nature of the game, and he understood the nature of media. He kept the magic smile going, but more importantly, he turned every press conference into some type of award show acceptance speech. He never allowed nobody to throw him and make it more serious than it was. <laughs> and before he ever stepped on an NBA court, Shaq's big break came on Inside Stuff. I said I want to do a story on him, and I want to play him one-on-one, -on -one, you know, just to see what he has. Hi, I'm uh, Mr. Rashad here to see uh, Mr. O'Neal, Shaquille O'Neal. I'm going to show you what it's going to be like in the NBA. You ready? Look at him, Mar Rashad, all yoked up. Mar got that XL tank top on. He's got that, you know, that Jackson 5 haircut, too. <laughs> huh? 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 Is that one? Is it make it, take it? Is it make it, take it? Come on out here, big fella. So we go out and we play. You <laughs> we play. And I make a shot. And I start talking a little crazy about the shot, you know? But Ahmad was antagonizing him. If you look at the tape, Ahmad like, was like antagonizing this dude. Yeah, Ahmad was talking smack, and this is what I, I did to him. Uh, in case you haven't seen it, I'll roll it back right there. Well, give me your best. Let me see, let me see, let me see your best. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Dang. Yeah, Ahmad. A lot of people thought that was staged, and uh, I'm gonna go back again, and I want you to see how I land it. Check this out. I've never seen this footage before. It's my first time seeing this. <laughs> Shaq done took down more rims, broke more glass than anybody, boy. As you can see, I landed on my neck and my back. Who stages that? Bars. Is that all you got? Yeah. <laughs> As a new legend was making his debut, Larry Legend was gracefully exiting the stage. Yes, I'm going to miss playing for the Boston Celtics because I was very proud to play for the Boston Celtics. Absolutely remember that night. Hey, that's Larry's retirement night. Magic Johnson, I mean, it's only right. Those two were attached at the hip. To have magic revealed shirt, sure. I thought that was the classiest touch. You only told me one lie in your career. Larry Bird said that there would be another Larry Bird one day. 
and Larry, there will never, ever, ever be another Larry Bird. Magic and Larry had sort of had that uh, come together moment where they realized how important they were to each other. You couldn't have had a better opponent, a better man that he battled against to send him off. Tonight, my basketball career is officially over and I had a blast. In 1989, Charlotte first saw their new team, but by 93, they were seeing something else. You also started to see this new generation of player start to come out. Larry Johnson, man, it, he okay. should be a small forward, but his muscles made him a power forward. <laughs> I think the 90s was that transition from you're a post, you're a shooting guard, you're a two guard, you're a three guard. Now you don't know. What are you? <laughs> the guy could do anything and everything. He was one of the best athletes that we've ever seen. Just a stud, man. The muscles, Barkley. No pain, no gain. Malone. I don't work on the guns right here. The antics after a dunk. Ah! Larry was fly, man. I think he had the gold tooth. Yeah. First gold tooth. First gold tooth in the NBA. The gold tooth, the, the part in the middle of his head. He always had the crispy cut, very low, Caesar-like, baby about a two on the clipper. I mean, he was definitely a character, but a great character. LJ was on a roll LJ. when he was cast in the most unlikely of roles. Grandmama. 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 Grandmama 6'5", 250, man. <laughs> Big grandma. <laughs> it's not too many guys that feel comfortable putting on a dress and that wig in the first place. <laughs> when he became grandmama, then he was bigger than basketball. That's a new granny in town. I remember this. Grandmama. <laughs> and then put Charlotte on the map. To Johnson at the buzzer. They had a really exciting team. They had uh, Muggsy Bogues, my main man. They had uh, Larry Johnson. They had Alonzo Mourning. Small, medium, large. Mm -hmm. Another formation of the trifecta. Ultimate fan person in Muggsy Bogues. Go, Muggsy! I got to go for it. You had the creativity and the intensity of Larry Johnson. And in the focus, bring your hat every night of Alonzo Mourning. Mourning over Ewing! Man, Charlotte was on fire. This is for the win and the series. Morning for the win. Hey! That's the year they beat Boston. And uh, they went to the second round. They had, they had trouble, so they met the Knicks. And I was on that team, so. My boy Oak shut it down. But we'll pick it up on the other side. Hey, yo, welcome back. MB 90s Volume 2 is in effect. In the conference finals, the Knicks looked at ease running with the Bulls and served up a stark new reality for the champs. Bulls have all they can handle here by the New York Knicks. Sark goes baseline. And boom! Oh, my goodness! Oh, my goodness! Oh, what a play by Sark! It was as exciting of play that you will ever see. Here's a guy that was bagging groceries. Here's a guy that, for his entire career, they told him he couldn't do it. The dunk, John Starks. And we used to always argue about this picture right here. It's the dunk on Jordan. But if you really see it, it really wasn't on Jordan. He didn't get dunked on. He didn't even dunk on. Like, yes, he did. It just so happened Horace Grant got the worst of it. Starks. Even if he didn't dunk over Jordan, it looks like it. It was close enough. And it was like, yeah, we Jordan you, Jordan. I mean, it was a great moment. But again, it went nowhere. It went nowhere. When they went to Chicago, Michael went off and the series was tied. He has 50. Michael Jordan with 50 points. You guys are making me cry again. Plenty of time on the shot clock, down of 10. Ewing for Smith. Smith. Smith, Smith, stop, Smith, stop the game. <laughs> pump fakes, pump fakes, pump fakes, pump fakes, pump fakes, pump fakes. Shoot the damn ball! Dunk it! It's crazy. I want to cry right now. I cried after that Charles Smith play. It's game five in the garden. You win that game, and 
I'd like to think that you're you're on your way to the finals. You finally beat Jordan. It just doesn't happen. You win the first two in a row, and then you lose four games in a row. We had a lot of highs, but even more lows. Those Knicks, those Knicks Bulls series, just, they were crushers. In Philadelphia, Charles Barkley apparently had his fill of losing. You want to stay with this team? I just want to win, man. I just want to win. Charles going to Philly to finish, he was going to get a title. Now he's in the perfect position. He's got teammates around him. Three, is that Thunder Dan? Thunder Dan. The thunder makes me shake. A shooter. <laughs> oh, does it now. He, he can do it all. Thunder Dan. He's the first guy I ever saw modeling without a t-shirt as an NBA player. Just doing it. Thunder Dan. He got the lightning strikes behind him. Kaboosh, kaboosh. Thunder Dan. He also had Kevin Johnson. And Kevin Johnson was one of the great point guards in the league at that time. What a shot! You know, if you mess around and let that little dude down there in the, in the paint, he would dunk on you, and he didn't care who you were. Hey, Jay. A huge effort by Kevin Johnson. Ooh, in your face! Oh, God, this was, mm -hmm. this was gorgeous. Kevin Johnson, the mayor of Sacramento, dunked on Hakeem Olajuwon. Kevin Johnson! Oh, my! He just tilted his body like and almost cuff, oh, God. Well, you'll be seeing that on your local newscast, Kevin Johnson. I mean, that was just, I'm one of the best defenders to ever live. Just like, oh, God, like, Olajuwon should have considered retirement after that. Surrounded with talent in the Valley of the Sun, Sir Charles was in charge. Charles Barkley was something else. He would get the ball on the fast break and just be gone. Here comes Sir Charles, Bravo! And he would dunk and swing on the rim from all the momentum. Don't get in his way. Rebound with seven footers. Push the basketball like a guard. Look out, here comes Phoenix. Oh, look at that pass. Oh my goodness. As a player, he's MVP. Undoubtedly one of those guys, top three, top five, every year in the era when basketball was at his best. Barkley would be named MVP in 93 with a personality that was as big as his game. What can he say about Charles? I mean, he's the guy that does no wrong. He's like, you know, Charles can say what he want, do what he want, and people love him. Hey, Charles. Charles Barkley, just so much fun. Happy. The joyous celebration of life. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Some fan ran out on the court. And Barkley's getting some smooches. <laughs> and the great thing about Charles is that he always had fun doing it. And they should be. Barkley was at the peak of his powers and played like he was on a mission. Barkley, 20 footer, yes, with 1.8 seconds. Charles Barkley. Nothing personal. I don't mean to brag, but can't no one person top me. was the time that they realized they really had a chance to win a championship. We are the best team in the world. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Ten seconds to go on the shot clock. 15 in the ballgame. Michael will take it. He fouls. He scores! Michael Jordan shot the ball 43 times. <laughs> Charles, you know, played well. He's going to be icing his elbow, too. <laughs> and they took the Bulls down to six games. Oh, what a ball! I remember Charles telling me that God told him that they were going to win. God want us to win the world championship. <laughs> I don't know if I go that far, Charles. Oh, no. I talked to him another night. That, <laughs> shoot, that never happens. It's Chicago's game to win and lose it, but 14.1 seconds up. Suns lead by two. They're going to put the ball in Michael Jordan's hands. You got Michael. You keep him out of the middle. They want Michael to get a full head of steam, try to keep him in the middle of the floor. The Bulls kept bringing people, you know, some people bring a rabbit out of the hat. They kept bringing people out, and this time it was John Paxson. Paxson going for the win! Here's Paxson for three! Paxson! Yeah! Yeah! That's the three! And I don't think people realize what Paxson meant to that championship game. 
Paxson actually put them over the hump in that particular game. The Chicago Bulls for the three straight NBA championship. That final series was one of the best playoff series I've ever remembered watching. This is the Bulls. Third in a row, they are now the Trip Bulls. As the Bulls make it three in a row, it's time for me to go. For MB90s, I'm Fab Five Freddy, and I'm gonna catch you on the rebound. Oh, I love the 90s, I love the 90s, I love the 90s, I miss the 90s. Obviously, the 90s mean so much to me. I grew up in the 90s. Now, I'm an 80s baby, but I was real young, late 80s. But I grew up in the 90s, and for me, the 90s were everything. The basketball, the colors, <coughs> the style, the music. The television shows, it's just, it's, it, obviously, it's, it's the era I grew up in. It's where I spent most of my childhood was the 90s. Man, I really do miss 90s basketball, man. I love the players. I, I love the game. And they, they, he, they were spot on about Shaq, man. The NBA needed somebody like that. They, Shaq, Shaq had a very unique personality, especially for a guy at his size. He was legitimately funny. And everything was free-flowing, natural. Dwight Howard tried to come in and be like Shaq, personality-wise. But Dwight Howard always came off as very corny and cheesy to me. Everything seemed forced with him. I, I've never thought Dwight Howard ever was a funny guy. He seems like the guy that tries to be funny, but... The only guy laughing at his own jokes and the things he does. That's what I think personally. But uh Shaq, Shaq was Shaq was the real deal, man. Great personality. Like I said, dude, do anything, everything. And every time you try to take he he he'd bring the light into any situation and make you laugh. Shaq, Shaq was dope, man. He was. I'm glad they mentioned uh, Kevin Johnson, man. People forget about Kevin Johnson. Hell, even I forget about Kevin Johnson at that time. When they brought him up, I was like, yeah, Kevin Johnson had bunnies. He had bunnies. If you've never heard that before, that's a term some people use to say somebody can jump really high or uh, could dunk, you know, get up there. He had bunnies, like a bunny rabbit hopping, right? He had bunnies. KJ, yeah, and then they brought up LJ. Hell, Larry Johnson was a beast. Lonzo Morton hitting long range jumpers. Ugh. Take me back to the better days of basketball, please. Y'all let me know what you think about it. Please share your opinion with me. Like, comment, subscribe. Bing, 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 bing. Hit the bell, stay notified. And I catch you on the next one. We out, baby.